Okay, we now welcome on a pair of very special guests. It is Max Verstappen and Are we very special? Yeah, very special. <laughs> very special. Very, it's, very, there's two and, of them. Yeah, very, very. And it was it's Sergio Perez, who you just heard. We gotta start Sergio. Uh Checo or Sergio? Which one are we going by? Checo. Okay. So I read a story uh when someone asked you how you got the nickname and you were like, It's pretty much the most unremarkable story ever. What like you just can you tell us what how you got the nickname Checo? Yeah, basically in Mexico, you know. All the Sergios are called Checos, so it's not like a a nickname I choose or they or people choose on me. You know, it's yeah. it's just automatic. Yeah, it's like in the U.S. with Richard and Dick. Yeah, right, exactly. Dick, <laughs> Dick Richard. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. So why? Can, this might be confusing, but did your parents maybe think about just naming you Checo because it's like you know that if they name you Sergio, you're Checo. Yeah, I need to get you my my dad's name. You know to. To, to make sure you ask him because I don't know what, what was he thinking. You know, everyone sense. calls me Checo. No one calls me Sergio. What, what if, if we ran into Sergio Garcia and just right off the bat we called him Checo, would he be cool with that, do you think? Yeah, he would love it. I'm okay, sure. I'm going to file that one away in okay. case we interview him. Okay, so um, we're very excited to have you guys on. We Just to be totally upfront, we are uh, Drive to Survive fans and then – you know, we'll watch F1. He's also if, a big fan of it. Yeah. <laughs> you're, Max, you're such a big fan of it, you just weren't on in the last season, huh? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I'm saving all my energy for the next one. <laughs> you just wanted to, you wanted to just consume it as a fan. You didn't want to be a participant. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I'm just, you know, paying my monthly subscription to, to Netflix. And uh, yeah, no, it's great. <laughs> Is there is there anything about that series because it's obviously done wonders here in the United States to increase just uh, the the fandom of F one racing and awareness of F one racing. Is there anything about the series though that you watch and you see how it's edited and you're like, man, they they really don't show it as we experience it. Uh, well, you know, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be too negative about it now because I mean, I, in the meantime, of course, I've talked to the people who are in charge and uh, who are running the show, so. Um, I think we actually came to a good understanding for the future. But um, up until now, uh, that's why, of course, last year I was not really involved. I think there were a few things yeah, where I was not really happy with and especially, um, you know, faking rivalries between drivers that for me um, is, is, uh, is a tough one because, of course, it did wonders in America. But also, I think uh, sometimes they portray a few drivers differently to how they actually are. And then, of course, the people are new to have won saying, oh, this guy is a bit of a dick or whatever, right? Which in real life he's not. But uh, having said that, like I just said before, I think for the future we came to a good understanding of, um, yeah, how we can uh, work together. So, yeah, I'm sure in the, in the next one uh, you will see a little bit more of me. Okay, so you, you, the fake rivalries, I get that. Um, I'll just cross off the question, why do you hate Daniel Ricciardo? Um, we just won't get into that. Uh, no, we're, we're, we're big fans of, of Danny Rick. We've had him on the show yeah. a bunch. Um, we've also had on your guys. Would you say he's your boss or coach, Christian Horner? What is that officially? Is he your boss? He's my best friend and my mate. Well, <laughs> and we, uh, yeah. That's what I was going to ask because um, does he ever look at you, Max, and you're like, dude, chill out? Like, you love me a little too much? Mm, not yet. Yeah, sometimes. Not, yeah, Checo, yeah. yeah. Checo knows but, you that. Know, Checo is just like, you know, he, he's from South America, you know, so of course. <laughs> I think that's quite a natural behavior for Checo. So, yeah, we do have to calm him down a few times. Yeah, Checo's like, wait, are you are you about to try to kiss Max? What's going on here, Christian? Yeah. I always have to calm him down, you know, because when there are a lot of cameras around and they're, like, get too close, especially in, especially yeah. in my first my first day with Red Bull, it was a bit shocking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when we had him on, he was telling us about his, his pre-race routine as the principal, and he said that he always has to find – the perfect toilet to piss in before the before the races, and he can always tell if he picks the correct porta potty, and it's going to be a good day. I guess he's been doing pretty good selecting which toilets he's gonna he's gonna choose this week. Is that I think, something? Yeah, the team now carries a, a personal toilet, so for him especially. <laughs> yeah, it's like Kim Jong Un when he travels with his own toilet on the train. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Is yeah. It, is there a moment where like before the race he ever tells you guys he's like, yeah, it was the, I hit the right hole this morning. You yeah. guys are in good shape. I thought it was only one hole anyway in the toilet. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but he yeah. does he let you know like, hey, look, it doesn't matter if the car's fast. I went to the right porta potty. We're good. 
You know, this is actually the first time I heard that from Christian. So I'm going to buy him for his birthday a yeah. toilet, a yeah. Japanese toilet. You know, with the, you know, the heating, so to make sure having that, the, yeah. the, the spray, like, you know, <laughs> having it hit the right trajectory. Yeah, you like, have to yeah. make sure it hits right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah I, exactly. I love that. Yeah. Um, it, we did a bad job starting out here. We didn't ask it. Easy question. Which one of you guys is faster? Ooh. Uh, we Well, we leave that up to you to decide. Okay, Checo. You can decide that one. I'll say Checo. I'll and say watch Max get mad. I, n- I never get mad. <laughs> never. So I'm 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 literally the calmest person on this earth. So I, I actually read a story about that, and it's crazy because obviously you know you guys are both very very competitive. You're you're in a sport that is like crazy and adrenaline. I read a story, Max, that like before races, you're sometimes playing like FIFA and just hanging out. Like, is that true that you have that? calmness to you before you're about to go 200 plus miles an hour around well, corners i mean not one hour before the race but um let's say we Maybe have 20 a, minutes before. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if, uh, if like the, the race is like a night race or whatever and i only need to leave the hotel in the afternoon i would wake up of course a bit earlier and sometimes i squeeze in a few games yeah <laughs> okay now in terms of the video game like do you guys use the video game to prep for courses at all or is that is there a simulator that you're able to use that's like better than that yeah well i mean we have a whole setup of course back at the factory in in milton Keynes, uh which uh is pretty incredible you know where we set up the car ready before we actually get to the race track itself so we we do spend a lot of time uh, on that yeah so i wouldn't i wouldn't call that a video game for me like the video game especially like on my laptop um i just enjoy like talking to my friends and just having a bit of fun you know because it's just it's also not a nice way of just relaxing you know outside of of racing basically i was asking if i'm good at the video game do you think i could do your job yeah you will be a world champion yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what about you Checo? before before each race do you find that you have to get yourself amped up do you like being excited going into it or are you in a mode where you're trying to calm yourself down no i'm pretty chill before the race you know sometimes i I try to sleep as much as possible, you know, because I got three kids at home. So I take a good opportunity to make sure I, I put the hours, you know, I, I like to sleep nine hours on a Saturday, you know, if, if we, especially if we have to get late to the circuit, if, if it's like a night race or so, mm-hmm. then it works out pretty well because you have plenty of time in the morning. What about pregame meals? Do you have anything in particular you like to eat before a race? No, nah, depends. It really depends if we got any time, you know, because normally the races are very early in the day, so you just have breakfast and it's very hard to get any lunch. But uh, I'm always changing maybe some pasta, plain pasta, to make sure I don't have any bad stomach throughout the race. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I would imagine. Has it ever happened where you got in your suit and you're like, uh-oh, I got to go to the bathroom. This stinks. Yeah, it has happened. <laughs> <laughs> it has, it's horrible. It's a horrible feeling. Imagine driving at... 300 kilometers and, and having those feelings they're not very nice no i would imagine i this might be a stupid question but both you guys obviously you know live on the edge you're 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 going fast all the time do you guys ever get like frustrated when you're in an uber and they're going really slow like do you get do you get mad at slow people in general in life uh well i don't i don't really get upset or whatever when they are slow because at the end of the day they just drive to the speed limit most of the time right um it's just when they lose the way or like they're just taking an alternative route uh-huh. for for no reason uh then sometimes well i'm actually pretty calm then I, I wouldn't immediately say that i would be upset and talk to the driver like hey what are you doing but inside i would be like like what the hell is going on right huh. right yeah. and just like if when you're on the highway like if you're going 70 miles an hour that's slow to you right like that's just that's not fast. Yeah. Well, yeah, of course it is slow, but I mean, we, are, of course, also race a lot during the weekend. So actually sometimes to just be driven around and just get from, let's say, A to B, it's it's not a bad thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. When did you guys first realize that you, you really loved going fast? Well, uh, I think when my mom gave birth. You were early? <laughs> <His> second <laughs> yeah, trimester? <but> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ready to go. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I I always like see when away. yeah the the other the, like seeing your guys um like old clips and cart racing and all that stuff when you were kids, that seems like the most fun in the entire world. Because I remember as a kid, whenever I got a chance to drive in like a go kart, it was like the best day ever. So and you got to do that all the time, right? 
Well, yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, I haven't driven a proper go-kart in like five years now. <laughs> but I mean, I also started driving when I was four years old. So Jeez. I did that for like 12, 13 years. Um, so I think sometimes it's not bad to have a little break from it, but it is, let's say, easy, easy going. It's where you learn all the basics of what you're doing right now. And of course, a lot less politics involved. So that that is for sure very nice okay similar question for you checo uh you love to golf i know that like you know we'll drive cars but then when you get in a golf cart for some reason it's so much fun you're like this is sick this is a golf cart do you still have that feeling when you get in a golf cart yeah i do i do okay especially good. if the if the if the if the golf course is a bit bumpy or you know yep. it has a blind corners it can get a good fun yeah because that would suck <laughs> Actually, yeah you know, the last time I, I went with some mates, we went into a place in, in Puerto Vallarta, in, in Vidanta, which is really tough. You know, you have some blind corners and so on, and they had few drinks, and oh, I was God. chasing them. <laughs> but he missed the corner, you know, so he just went really late into the corner, and he rolled over the car. He did a bit of a jackass. <laughs> wow. Uh, Literally rolled the car into into my mates. Wow, jeez, yeah. and That's it, it can get very very difficult. Uh, by the way, I heard you have really good ball control when you play golf. Uh, did you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how how good are you? I'm good. Oh, okay. I'm good. <laughs> when you shoot, what are we? What's good? Because to me, if you break a hundred, you're good. How good are we talking? He's gonna turn pro after his fun career. Yeah. What, uh, what, uh, yeah. What do you golf usually? Eighteen. Eighteen. So 18 uh, handicap. Yeah, handicap. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's pretty good. I like that. It's like you're asking how good are you? Like, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. You don't see that. I mean, <laughs> 80 for me, uh, you know, with the amount of time I spend uh, playing golf, it's good, you know, because I don't play that much. And I'm not practicing enough. So, yeah. yeah. But once I retire, I want to get down to the below, into the fives, I think. So are you good? No, What's your handicap? Yeah, I, I broke 130 yeah. last week, so that was pretty big <laughs> for me. Yeah. Okay. I skipped three holes, but yeah. I shot 127. I, I, mean, I really don't understand what you guys are talking yeah. about. It's, it's like I never play golf. Because hitting 100 on a golf course, it's like, uh, it's good. It's bad. You know, like, it's bad. Yeah, so, <laughs> Max, to put it in racing terms, if you had a race in, like, let's say it was an hour and a half, we would do the race in, like, four hours. <laughs> yeah, <very> right. Okay. <laughs> that's that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. That's you, pretty impressive. Yeah, it'd be like you, you guys can drive still backwards finishing faster. the race, you're not crashing or Correct. hitting the wall, so that's good. Correct. Yeah, that's good. And we're also getting drunk during the race and then and, just uh, forgetting how to add up a lot of fuel because you're not going that much flat out so actually you're very good for the environment as well <laughs> also when, point. when you say we finish the race that's not exactly right because we skip a bunch of holes uh i usually stop around it's okay, hole 12. you just cut the track it's yeah. fine yeah. nobody will nobody will notice yeah. so um I, something that we always can't grasp our you know minds around is like f1 you guys are teammates but you're also competing against each other like american sport when you're on your team that's your team is it difficult at times to be like, hey, we're we're a team, but we also are trying to win this race? Like, you guys, you you seem like you have a great relationship, but how does that work day to day? It's just for the cameras. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. You guys are going to fist fight after this. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> but is it difficult? Like, is, well, is it is it hard day to day to just be like, we know that we're, we're going for the same goal, but at the end of the day, we also want to win? Yeah, but I think it, it all has to do with respect, isn't it? Like, if you respect each other, you can uh, say to your teammate, like, you did a better job than me this weekend or whatever, you know, in a race. And as long as you can do that to each other, and besides that, don't take things too personal and still have a good uh, understanding. Also, not just purely about racing, but just in life or as, like, kind of teammates working together to make the team faster as well. I think that's what we have at the moment, and I think that works really well. But it's not always that easy, of course, because you can see in other teams, it's not always the same. Um, but it's very important to find that kind of uh, relationship together, you know, to, to always think about how can we make the car faster together because you have to work together. Um, and then, of course, at the end of the day, you both benefit from it. Yeah. What's the most important part, do you think, like being on a team that fosters that kind of teamwork, like having people around you that encourage you to get along? Or is it mostly on the drivers? things with a boat i mean yeah. you need to have the right people around you as well who, who you know don't um stimulate the kind of like the internal fighting if you know what i mean and i think the team we are in at the moment like there are a lot of good people and uh, yeah we all get on really well 
together. And, and I think that is very important. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who's one unsung hero of Red Bull Racing? A guy that doesn't get their name out that much. Um, you know, maybe somebody that kind of flies under the radar a little bit, but is very, very important to you guys doing your job. Definitely not marketing. <laughs> <laughs> we can definitely live without them. Yeah, yeah they set you up with these two assholes yeah, over right. here. Yeah, they're sitting, they're sitting, they're sitting behind us. You know, so we ha we do have to say this. Yeah. yeah. But uh, nah, there are so many people involved um, that you always have to speak of a of a of a great team effort. You know, because there are only a limited amount of people who come to actually to the track, but there's so many people back at the factory who are working and contributing to to this great results uh, we get you know that it's always impossible you know to to thank them enough yeah so um this year i i should have said by the way from the start i'm actually a ferrari fan so um apologies. That's all right. yeah yeah well you Where's guys your cap? yeah uh, why are you actually, wearing the cap i have some caps um i just i basically picked them because uh, I wanted a team that I could essentially be like, yeah, look at the history, even though they're not that good now. It's like, yeah, but we have all these rings. Ah, the, uh, yeah, that the, kind of guy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't, yeah. All okay. my other yeah, teams. Yeah, the other teams yeah. I root for in American sports don't have that. I can't be like, it's basically, I've I've said it's like Yankee fans. Yankee fans can be like 27 rings. But how is it different this year against Ferrari versus like last year with Mercedes, where it felt obviously the Mercedes rivalry was very heated at the end. How is it different now, like shifting it where Ferrari is your main competition for this season? Uh, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's just completely different mentalities as well, because of course, one side is, let's say, English, German, the other one is, is basically, basically Italian for most of it. Um, but I think in general for the sport, first of all, it's great to see Ferrari back up there. Um, and I think it's good that you see different kind of teams like coming around and, and actually start fighting again for wins and, and potentially uh, a championship. Uh, but also I think between the two teams, like, yeah, we get on really well. Of course, naturally you want to beat each other and, and you will always do everything you can to make sure that happens. But like I said, it's the same actually with as what we have as drivers, as long as you re respect each other, I think that that's the most important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as the F1 race in Miami went, that seemed like it was an incredible spectacle down there. Like all the celebrities and, and everybody that showed up, especially before the race. Who was the most famous person you guys met in Miami? I uh, definitely, it's going to be, I actually took him to the track, you know, I drove with him with Bad Bunny. You know him? Yeah, Bad Bunny. Yeah. yeah. Yes. That's cool. <laughs> yes. I mean, he, he's pretty famous in, in America. Yeah. Was it, is he a big F1 guy? You, He's a very bad bunny. Yeah, uh, he's a bad bunny. <laughs> is he a big fan of the sport? He li he likes the sport. Uh, I think he recently started with it. So we actually had his picture on uh, on our car from his album. No, yeah. not nice. from him. Nice. Um, I saw. I thought you had his face in the cockpit. <laughs> <laughs> I saw. Uh, on my face. I think Tom Brady was down there, right? Tom Brady yeah. was down at the race. What what yeah, other sport? Is not famous. Yeah. What, what other sport <laughs> is? Yeah. What other sport uh, has athletes that you think would translate the best to becoming F one drivers? Like, do you think soccer players as a whole would be good F one drivers? American football I, golfers. I think that soccer players are are good uh, in in anything. You know, they they're very good because they can be like, if they play golf, they're really good at it. Or the golfers, they can be also very good. Fighters, you know the boxers. Yeah, I, I don't know, to be honest, like, I mean, if if let's say we do it the other way around, if the, if you would put me in a on a pitch, like, I, I would get to a certain level, but I would never be, let's say, F one worthy mm -hmm. level in terms of uh, in their sport, right? So football, yeah, whatever, soccer, football, uh, name it, basketball. I'm not probably not even tall enough for that anyway. Yeah. So yeah, uh, no but, but uh, in general, like. You get, I guess, to a okay-ish level if you work hard for a few years, but you need to grow up with it. It needs to be your passion as well, right, to, to become really good. But what if we took you guys and we put you in NASCAR? In the U.S., mm -hmm. like NASCAR has always been a very popular. That's been our motorsport that we've had. Um, if you guys became NASCAR drivers, how long until you became dominant, P1, P2? I think we certainly will enjoy it more because we can eat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we can eat a lot. Daniel yeah. won. Uh, last yeah, Daniel won last year. You know, our, our Mexican won NASCAR for the first time, so that was pretty big. Yeah. Well, you know, I do race a bit of, of, let's say, NASCAR on my simulator at home, and it's a completely different discipline. So 
for us to get good at it, um, it will also take quite a bit of time. You know, uh, it's it's not easy. And it's the other way around as well for them, you know, to get good in an F1 car, whatever. It, it also takes time. You need to really grow up with it. Yeah. Um, all right. So I had what this has been awesome and we appreciate you guys coming on. I had one last question. It's the rowback question. Use code take for 20 percent off your first purchase. We're going to send you guys some Q-zips and hoodies for coming on the show. R-H-O-B-A-C-K dot com. Use code take for 20 percent off your first purchase. So my last question is in American football, which we are that's that's our favorite sport. There's a feeling you have when a pass will be incomplete and you're hoping for a flag right after. We've noticed, or at least I've noticed watching F1, there's always, like, complaints that every team has after a race. Do you guys finish a race and you're like, maybe we can complain our way to a victory? Because it feels like that, that's happened a few times, has it not? Not you personally, but the team principal. Uh, well, it depends. You know, sometimes it can be quite obvious. So then there is a chance of potentially getting a win or whatever. But, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, it can happen. It, it has happened. But uh, I think that's part of every sport. Like, you know, um, now also, let's say in soccer, you got this like VAR, right? Yeah. So it's sometimes you get a penalty or not. Uh, you know, yeah, these things happen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, quite a lot of sports now. My dumb brain would be like, I would, I, if I were you guys, I would like already be home eating dinner being like, maybe, it, maybe, maybe it's changed. Maybe I won. Yeah, keep refreshing Twitter. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, I've, you know, I've been on a podium and then, you know, I was off it again or, yeah, you know, so I, I know that feeling. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Um, we had one other question coming from one of our guys here that's actually a big F1 fan. He told us that they just made a rule change about porpoising. And I have no idea what porpoising yeah, is. Yeah, what is that? But can you tell us, is porp do you do you like to porpoise or are you upset that they made this rule change about porpoising? Oh, we love it. We love it. It's oh. so nice. No, so, I mean, you, you have been watching this year, yeah? Yes. Yeah, Some. and you see the cars always. Yeah, oh, not every car, but quite a few cars on the straight. The they're, gray going, car. they're going. They're going. Like, especially the that car. beautiful gray car. Uh huh. <laughs> car, you know, yeah. It's going like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, basically, with these new regulations, um, because we are generating the downforce also from from more from the floor. Um, it's basically what what happens is that the car, of course, because of downforce, sucks to the floor. But then because of a certain stall or whatever, what happens under the floor, it goes up and down, like it keeps sucking. But then, of course, it stalls, it goes up and then it, it tries to suck down again. And some cars or some teams have that more under control than others. Mm -hmm. And when that happens at 300, it's really not like it's really well, it can be painful for some if it's really aggressive. And of course, especially one team has been moaning about it a lot. So that's why I think now they will try to investigate or try to understand how we can limit these kind of things. Um, so yeah, this weekend will be the first try to see, uh, how we can limit it for the drivers in terms of comfort. Uh, it will be quite interesting to see if it actually changes up a bit, uh, the performance between cars. You, you don't know yet. Mm -hmm. Sounds so, like, all right. So yeah, we don't, we're not going to name the team, but it sounds like they've been complaining a well, lot. Well, it's a like, silver car. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like a German guy with a British driver kind of hypothetical. Uh, I do not. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate you guys so much and, uh, good luck this weekend. And, uh, hopefully we get to talk to you again. This has been a lot of fun. Yeah. Thank you guys. All right. Thank you.